So today we've got the new Rally Militis Team ETAP. Now Rally as a brand are one of the oldest, most established brands out there, used to be probably the biggest brand in the world. But over recent years with bikes like the Militis and a couple of other models in their range, uh, Rally are really starting to come back to being a real strength and a true force in the market once again. The Militis was uh, designed by Rally in-house um, to be the bike of choice for their pro team. The rally team has had great success uh, in UK domestic racing over the last couple of years, especially within the Tour Series, and um, from everything we're hearing from them, they've got big ambitions to become uh, an even bigger power. So this one is the Militus Team ETAP. Uh, this is quite a special bike because not only is it an absolute showcase for some of the best equipment out there, it's also the first bike to be built back at Rally's HQ in Nottingham for more than a couple of decades. It's a small start for bringing any sort of production back to the UK, but uh, it's one that we applaud. This bike has been designed to be short wheelbase, super aggressive angles, extremely quick and reactive. Um, as you'd imagine for a bike that's been developed for what is essentially a, a sort of longer extended form of crit racing. You know, this is all about shoulder to shoulder racing, quick reactions, sharp high speed corners. So when you get out on this Militus, you can really, really feel where all that design influence has, has come into play. You know, this is a super, super aggressive bike. It's super stiff. It's got fantastic response to pedal inputs and, and the steering and handling and the sharpness of the way it turns is all so reactive and so fast. You know, it's a bike that when you ride, you really, really got to be on it and you've really got to want to exploit what it's best at. And that's just accelerating, holding that speed and just getting from A to B as quickly as possible. So when you're drilling down into the details of this bike, you've got a nice super light frame around 800 grams. So you're looking at a fork that's around 350 grams, but then it's everything else that it comes with. Full SRAM Red ETAP group set with no emissions whatsoever. You've got Zips, fantastic 202 carbon clincher wheels, shod with Schwal Bay's excellent new one tire. The cockpit is amazing. You know, you've got a Zip carbon SL Sprint stem matched to the Zip SL70 aero bar, Zip carbon seat post, and topping things off with a Fisicarioni. You know, it's one of those bikes you get on and you just think, well, there's pretty much nothing I'd change here. This is one of the, the first full production bikes that we've seen that's, that has spec ETAP. It's great to be able to spend you know, even more time riding SRAM's new wireless group. We're just so impressed with the simplicity of the way it works, the simplicity of maintenance, the idiot-proof way that, that it handles shifting. Right lever down, left lever up, bang them both together and it'll shift the front mech into its alternate position. It's one of those things where it's like SRAM came up with the idea of making an electronic group set and what can electronics do? where it can be said that their rivals basically sort of emulate a mechanical system but using an electronic ways to move it. It's quite radical from SRAM and the outcome is, uh, is really, really impressive. The shifting with ETA, it's just so intuitive. It's something you just adjust to in an inordinately short amount of time. If you want to shift completely up the block, completely down the block, it's just a case of holding that button in, holding that lever clicked and it will just ramp up and ramp down. And it does this a little bit different to a mechanical system or other electronic systems. Because the rear mech actually sinks in with the rear cassette, it shifts into each individual cog only when it meets the actual ramp point. This can feel a little bit slower, but in fact, it's actually just really, really accurate. So if you're holding and you want to shift up four, five, six gears, you can actually feel every one that it settles into. So you're always going to hit that one that you wanted. You never overshift or undershift, um, which you can find in mechanical because you just bang it and you're just sweeping up and almost hoping for the best and waiting for the chain to clatter and settle. This may be a modicum slower, but it's so much more accurate that you'll never really tell the difference. And shifting on the front, you know, that is quite an interesting concept of pressing both levers together. What it does as a really kind of neat trick is that it slightly overshifts and then the mech pulls back. So you always get a perfect kind of chain settlement. You never get that kind of half up, half in. The front mech works on the same principle as their mechanical systems in that it doesn't just move in and out. It actually operates on a yaw system, so it arcs in and out. And what that does is it just uh, kind of moves the chain and settles the chain a lot more easily. So you never end up with that kind of half shift up or uh, you know the clattery noise of the cage hitting the chain. Um, it's a nice smooth operation and all the more impressive for it. 
Moving back up to the front of the bike uh, with this, this zip cockpit, uh, it's just a perfect match for a bike that's built to be going this quickly. As you can see by the size of the SL Sprint stem, it's pretty solid, it's not going to go anywhere. And then moving on to the bar, we've got this nice sort of mid shallow drop and then a huge great big wing section on the top, which has been, as you'd expect from zip, wind tunnel developed and tested and that's informed the design. But aside from any kind of what advantage or anything you know, you're going to get from it, it's actually quite a comfortable place to be. Um, having that big deep section when you're on kind of long extended climbs and you just want to be sitting up on the top so it's a really nice place to rest your hands or if you're just trying to pin it along the flat um, you've got a nice big flat secure surface you can just rest your elbows on get into a kind of semi TT style and just concentrate on turning the pedals it not only looks good it's actually a lot more practical than at first you'd think so when all these elements all come together um, I think as we said at the start this is a proper racers machine it's brutishly stiff, it's super, super agile. There's some big, big tubes going on here, the massive, great big box section chain stays, big oversized seat post, massive, great big oversized stem. But this is a bike that you can live with, you can ride on for four or five hours without it giving you a kick in, which is quite an impressive trick. We're not necessarily saying you should, uh, you know, get rid of your endurance bike because the, the one defining factor of this is, is that ride position is super aggressive. So if you can live with it, you will absolutely love it. But, uh, you know, you've got to be fairly flexible and fairly happy to be living in a flat back, low down, super aggressive riding position just to get the most out of this bike. As you can imagine with a bike of this spec, it's not, not going to be cheap and it is a limited edition model. It is built in the UK, uh, almost special order, so it's going to retail for £6,000. does seem like a lot of money, not surprisingly, it probably seems like a lot of money for people thinking about rally of late rather than rally as a history, but rest assured this is a proper super bike and it's worth every accolade that's going to be coming to it.